Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's Friday the 28th of December. My name is Martin Lee, and here is part three of your 2018 in review. And you'll find out why we're doing this, because at the end of the show, your feedback, your question that I'm asking you this week is all about your 2018 highlight. And so I thought I'd try and jog your memory. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. Myev.com is the world's first marketplace all about EVs. None of those fossil cars to get in the way. Every single car you find on there is something you might want or maybe you're selling check out myev.com let's look back at the months of may and june and if you thought the first four months if you've missed part one and part two over the last two days were breathless and frantic you wait till we recap these two months in electric cars in 2018 on the first of may psa so persian citro that group citroen that group their ds brand will be the one that electrifies first and they start with an upscale appeal and Mercedes-Benz said that it's Tesla power wall killer because they used to provide home storage from Mercedes-Benz. Well, they were killing that off because, well, and other reasons. Uh, 2nd of May, Winnebago launched the all-electric platform for eventually all-electric uh, motorhomes and RVs. How cool is that? On the 3rd of May, Daimler confirmed they were buying electric car battery cells from China's CATL. Meanwhile, Kia unveiled the Nero EV and we said farewell, Flufferbot. There was earnings call reaction from the Tesla earnings call and we heard about one particular piece of automation, which Elon Musk called Flufferbot, which was all about trying to automate putting some soundproofing fluff on another piece of the car. And the machine, the robot kept dropping it, couldn't get it in the right place. In the end, humans proved to be far better at doing this. And in the end, when Elon said, take out two cars, one with the fluff and one without the fluff, and see if it does make it the car quieter, they found out that it didn't. Therefore, even the fluff was killed alongside fluffer bot but it goes to show the efforts they're going to to make those teslas on the 6th of may bp british petroleum but bp bought the irish tech startup called ubiworks as the smart home battle was hotting up and on the 10th of may fully charged the youtube channel finally drove the mercedes eqc with johnny smith who would even end up on his hands and knees looking underneath to a somewhat bemused mercedes chief engineer and bmw's wireless car charging was confirmed as coming soon on the 12th of may tesla enabled orders for the dual motor and performance model Model 3 versions, and they said that the orders would be open on the configurator within at least a week. And the next day, the 13th of May, more Tesla news as their engineering lead was confirmed to be <clears throat> taking a break from Model 3 production. Yeah, he never returned. On the 15th of May, electric vehicles turned out to make people calmer, happier and more focused, according to a new study. And on the same day, Tesla unveiled a new large power pack project for grid balancing here in Europe. On the 16th of May, BMW Group passed 250,000 electrified vehicles on the roads. And the next day, on the 17th of May, Tesla confirmed that they had taken a look at all of the Model 3 production. What was actually required to get to that next stage of the ramp was a six-day shutdown to fix all of the problems. Elon Musk then hired two Tesla interns who had helped solve a Model 3 production issue. On the 20th of May, the newly married Duke and Duchess of Sussex drove that Jaguar E-Type Concept Zero, the one with the big battery inside. And then the next day, the Model 3 performance version turned out to be a BMW M3 rival, doing 0-60 to in 3.5 seconds and 155 miles an hour top speed, but with a $78,000 price tag putting off a few people. On the 23rd of May, BP continued their investment and just diversifying a little bit away from the oil industry, heading towards EVs, a £20 million a dollar investment actually in solid state batteries. On the same day, Toyota confirmed that conventional cars are the future, not EVs or even plug-in hybrids, and that if they would do anything with batteries, it will always be hybrids for Toyota. On the 26th of May, Elon Musk confirmed to me directly that the Tesla factory shutdown would be that weekend. In one of the more surreal moments of my Twitter life, it was getting a tweet from Elon Musk. I can only say that when Elon Musk tweets you directly, your timeline goes a little bit bonkers. Elon told me via Twitter that six cargo planes were flying from Germany to California from Tesla Groman Engineering. And Elon's tweet to me then followed up to say that it would enable 6,000 Model 3s every 
every single week to be made. All four zones now working at the Giga factory. And it just goes to show that uh, if you talk about electric cars enough and Tesla, eventually Elon will spot your tweet and send you a direct reply. On the 28th of May, a hypermiling Model 3 would do 606 miles on a single charge, which would, which would best, I think the previous best was a few weeks before somebody got late 500s out of it, and then a new hypermiler would do 606 miles on a single charge. At the end of the month, on the 30th of May, Zipcar deployed e-golfs in London, Neo filed for a 2 billion US IPO, Mercedes-Benz e-sprinters were uh, coming on the market with 93 miles of range, and the next day, Tesla's Model 3 won the Consumer Report's blessing after fixing their brakes with an over-the-air update and the Audi e-tron EV was confirmed to get side cameras instead of wing mirrors for aerodynamics in the markets that would legally allow them. And that was just the highlights of one month in EVs. Let's do June. The Hyundai Kona EV would get its Norwegian details on the 1st of June and the waiting list would grow and grow and grow. And on the 1st of June, Canada's first big delivery of Tesla Model 3s was like Christmas morning for some people. Moving forward onto the 4th of June, the Hyundai Kona Electric order book was closed in Norway after such big demand and a lower price than many thought it would have. On the 7th of June, Elon Musk would get emotional at the earnings call reaction, how the worker injury rate was reduced, how Tesla were improving quality and bringing down those costs of battery packs and cell costs as well. Well, the Gigafactory was in overdrive and the Model 3 would become the top-selling premium sedan. The next day, on the 8th of June, the World Rallycross Championship confirmed they would be going electric and the Kia e-Nero got its public unveiling. And the first all-electric Porsche was renamed from Mission E to the Taycan. On the 13th of June, bad news for some Tesla employees. 9% of its workforce would be laid off. And Daimler ordered a recall of nearly 774,000 diesels. They just couldn't catch a break with diesels. The VW Pikes Peak Racer had its technical details unveiled and we all started drooling. On the 17th of June, the new Model 3 assembly line produced its very first car. Elon Musk confirmed he would be at the factory 24-7 to fix the bottlenecks. And on the 18th of June, we were all talking about a tent. Do we really care that a car was made in a tent? Does it matter? The world feigned outrage. You know how like the internet, how Twitter can be outraged at something. I can't believe my favourite TV show was cancelled. I'm outraged! People get outraged over many things on Twitter, including cars being made in tents this year. On the 21st of June, Porsche bought into Rimac. Yes, Rimac, those that make crazy fast hypercars. Meanwhile, Ford said the battery technology for EVs simply wasn't ready. You try telling that to people who have been driving Teslas for the past eight years with presumably imaginary batteries. On the 25th of June, the VW IDR set this new Pikes Peak record. On the 26th of June, Mad Max Mode was confirmed for autopilot lane changes. You have to wait a few months, actually, until that was actually enabled on your car. And the very first 350 kilowatt charger opened on the 26th of June in Germany. On the 27th of June, $2 billion worth of investment was confirmed for Faraday Future. Ouch. Fast forward a few months and that company's outlook isn't looking so rosy. On the 28th of June, another internal Tesla email hinted at some very good news for the production numbers. On the 29th of June, this was big news here in the UK, BP made their biggest, as far as I know, EV investment to date. They bought ChargeMaster. ChargeMaster is the UK's largest EV charging company, and it's now BP ChargeMaster. Uh, my car is currently charging here in central London on somewhere, it's about five minutes from the studio that I'm recording this in, somewhere called St. James's, I think St. James's Square, I think it is, uh, not too far from BT, uh, BP. And the new logo is already on the side of the charger saying BP. Uh, emblazoned on the side, so they are uh, actually putting their branding on the EV chargers now. Well, on the 30th of June, we had one of our Saturday specials, and I was introduced to somebody who it would be a pleasure to talk to for the very first time, but would have many conversations with as the year went on. Dimitri, Dimitri Kosko, from, was joined us live from Miami, because he is the man behind myev.com. And as the weeks would go by, uh, we would end up 
partnering uh, with this uh, show and they would end up uh, helping me make this program. My be all about custom designing, buying and selling electric cars. Very useful for those that want the very best deal out there. And maybe it'll be how you buy and sell your next EV. And that's really where the Saturday specials began as well. Had such an amazing reaction to Dimitri's interview that we ended up doing them almost as many Saturdays as we could, talking to people in the EV community, in the EV space. And it's one of the things that I think most people have quite liked about EV News Daily in 2018. So, myev.com have set us the question of the week this week, which is, whether you're an EV owner or not, what's been your standout moment of the year? Uh, you can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can go to myev.com, click on research at the top, and then question of the week, or you can go onto the YouTube or Facebook comments and leave me your answer. We'll read them out on Sunday. Thank you to 149 patrons of the show who keep us going. If you would like to be the 150th, or maybe even as we work our way towards 200, uh, you can check out Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash evnewsdaily, especially our exec producers uh, for $10 a month. Uh, they go such a long way in helping keep this show not only on the air, but spreading the word and all 340 episodes in the archive get to stay online and anyone in the world can discover EVs through that archive and hopefully you and I can help convert maybe just a couple more to drive an electric car. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do that. Then you get it first and free and automatically. And if you want to catch up on the socials over the weekend, just search EV News Daily. Part four of our best of will be coming tomorrow. In the meantime, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you tomorrow.